So hi, Chris. Hello. Yeah, I'm Chris from Raya Media. Uh, we're here at Superview 2023. Uh, we got three modules to show you today. Uh, we've got DiZygo, which is a digital oscillator. It's two voices. One's based on some square wave FM synthesis. The other's based on some sine wave phase modulation. We've got Taurus. Taurus is a module in beta right now. It's an overdub looper, has some pattern chaining behaviors and different pitch shifting techniques. Then we've also got Monolith. Monolith is a digital reverb. Uh, in addition to being a digital reverb, it has some pitch shifting based on exponential FM. Cool, so um, you've got a bit of a patch going. Do you want to just uh, put that sure. up? We can hear it and then uh, you can explain what's going on. That sounds great. Do you want me to kick the volume up? Yeah, let's hear it. So let's go ahead and just turn down the reverb and get a good listen to the oscillator. So here we've got an oscillator. It's got two buttons. One's for a trigger uh, for its built-in envelope. The other button's for switching between two different voices. We're listening to the first voice right now, which is a square wave oscillator based on some FM synthesis. Uh, as you can see here, we've got modulation depth. It allows us to do different pitch shifting that kind of sounds like organ stops. Below, we've got a frequency knob. This frequency knob impacts the FM modulator oscillator. But in addition to this square wave, we have this sine wave that does some phase modulation. And so these two voices are kind of a self-contained voice with their built-in envelope. You can switch between them or you can play them together to get some rich sounds that are based on both FM synthesis and phase modulation. In addition to having stereo output, this modulator has an envelope out for its built-in uh, VCA. That envelope shape is a slightly narrower width than the actual uh, amplitude envelope, so you can get different filter sweeps with an analog filter. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of DiZygo. In addition to DiZygo, we've got this Taurus module. Taurus is kind of based on the idea of uh, a clock synced looper. It's got some different patterns here. I'll go ahead and kick off a recording. Once you've recorded something to the bank, you can mix between the clean input as well as the recorded input. Once you record something, there's some different pitch shifting techniques. We've got some octave buttons that allow you to do things like double time, quadruple time, half time, and quarter time. Uh, those octave shifts will snap to the clock in. Right now, the clock is being synced with the BeatStep Pro. In addition to the octave shifting for pitch effects, we've got this harmonic knob. The harmonic knob influences the recorded buffer. Uh, this recorded pattern bank buffer is actually based on note grains. So based on the incoming clock, it can record up to 16 note steps. With the harmonic knob, you can play those notes at different speeds. Uh, it's an integer scalar applied to playback speed. So you get things like eight times as fast, versus other things like one times as fast, two times as fast sort of thing. Uh, for these different pitch shifting techniques, uh, we have some different clock outs. We're taking a clock in here from the BeatStep Pro. We've got a clock out based on the octave shift. So if you do like double time, you get a clock multiplier. Similarly, quarter time or quadruple time, you get into this 4x clock multiplier. We've got a reset gate out, so every time your pattern that you've recorded um, resets or restarts, you get, a, you get a gate signal out. In addition to that, for these notes that you can play back at different speeds, you get a gate out for that reset as well. It gives you up to an 8x clock multiplier. You know, the other thing about Taurus is it supports pattern chaining. So we'll kick it over to another pattern, record a sequence real fast. Then you can do pattern chaining between the two sequences. I'll just switch over to the full recording with the mix knob. But it lets you build some complex sequences, d dynamically do some looping. In addition to doing patterns in series, you can do them overlaid each other. So how long is the recording time? You know, each one of these pattern banks supports 16 steps or 16 notes of recording. You can also do a chain record to, do, to get 64 continuous steps. Uh, when I've been using it thus far, like a 30 BPM quarter note works for these note grains. 
Um, but we'll see if we can squeeze anything out in the future. Right now, Taurus is in beta, so some things are still up for debate. In addition to Taurus, we can move over and talk some about Monolith. Yeah, sure. Monolith is a digital reverb. I'll just kind of bypass Taurus for now. Here's the clean incoming dizygote sound. Uh, the premise of Monolith is to give people an effects unit that allows for exponential FM synthesis. Um, it's got a built-in pitch shifter, but we'll go ahead and just listen to some of the reverb sounds. You've got a blend knob here. When you don't have pitch shifting on, blend lets you go from the clean signal into a filtered signal. This filter is based on the premise of a DJ filter, so you get low passes or you also get high passes. Um, it's also got a wet knob, which pertains to the reverb decay. So, can build really high end, um, kind of swelling sounds, can also then drop it down into low pass territories. Um, but the main excitement with Monolith is that it's a pitch shifter. So let's go ahead and turn pitch shifting on. As you can see, Monolith is taking a clock in from the Taurus, so it's tempo synced with your gear. These bottom three knobs all pertain to the modulator oscillator for this pitch shifter. We've got a mod knob, which pertains to kind of the, uh, how would you put it, the pitch shifting depth or the amount of pitch shift. With this current pitch shifting table, you can get things like two octave shifts, single octave shifts. You can get into different note step shifts or down to more microtonal shifts. You can turn off quantizing so that you get a clean sweep of these pitch changes. You can turn on quantizing so that you get kind of stepped pitches sort of thing. In addition to this, we've got a frequency knob for this modulation oscillator. As I was saying before, you can take a clock sync in so this modulator waveform can be tempo synced. Um, the frequency knob with the clock source will be kind of a clock multiplier. You can get really low or slow sounding swelling pitch changes, as well as into audio rate pitch modulation sort of stuff. The final knob on this bottom row is a shape knob. We've been listening to pitch shifting with a square wave modulator, um, but this is a wave table, so we can also listen to different triangle sounds. More of a sweeping experience. Uh, in addition to that, there's also more sinusoidal. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of Monolith. It's this world of having pitch shifting kind of applied to your final pass, gives you kind of funky, you know, frequency effects, and and all have been really excited about it. Uh, admittedly, I feel like I've listened to Monolith at this point for hours during development, and it's really exciting to be showing it today at Superbooth. So uh, when, when are you hoping to kind of have all these ready? You said that uh, Taurus was in beta, but like, what, where are we in the kind of development cycle and what kind of price are we looking at? Yeah, so Dizygote and Monolith are available today. Uh, Dizygote's USD 229. Monolith is USD 309. Taurus, hopefully we have something out by the end of the year. It's probably looking like 399 USD. Brilliant. Well, Chris, thank you very much and uh, good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Have a great time at Superbooth.